Have you ever wondered what makes a successful warfare strategy? At the heart of every victory or defeat lies a strategy. It's the blueprint of action, the architecture of triumph. It's where the battle is won or lost, even before the first sword is drawn. It's the art and science of warfare, and no one knew it better than Sun Tzu. Who is Sun Tzu, you ask? He was an ancient Chinese military strategist, the Mozart of warfare, if you will. His masterpiece, The Art of War, is still studied and applied not only in military academies but also in corporate boardrooms across the globe. His principles of strategy, laid out over 2,000 years ago, are timeless. They transcend eras and cultures proving that the essence of conflict and competition remains unchanged throughout history. So, ready to learn from the master himself? Let's dive into the timeless wisdom of Sun Tzu's Art of War. Sun Tzu's Art of War is built around five constants. This quintet of principles sets the foundation for all strategy, whether in warfare, business or life itself. First, we have the way. This refers to the moral compass guiding a nation or leader. It's about the alignment of people's hearts and minds, a unity of purpose that propels an army forward. When people believe in their cause, they fight with passion and determination. Next is the weather. Now, this isn't just about whether it's sunny or raining on the battlefield. Sun Tzu used weather as a metaphor for the changing circumstances and conditions that we must navigate. It's about understanding and adapting to the ebb and flow of situations. Then, we have the terrain. Again, this isn't just about physical geography, it's about the environment in which you're operating. In warfare, it could be the actual battlefield's layout. In business, it could be the market conditions. Understanding your terrain is crucial to leveraging it to your advantage. The fourth constant is the commander. This embodies qualities such as wisdom, sincerity, benevolence, courage, and strictness. A good commander or leader is one who can inspire and command respect. They must understand their people, know when to be kind and when to be firm, and make wise decisions under pressure. Finally, we have method and discipline. This is about organization, control, and the allocation of resources. It's about having a well-structured system in place, where everyone knows their roles, and resources are used wisely and strategically. These five constants aren't standalone elements, they interplay with each other, influencing and shaping strategy. They remind us that success isn't just about the strength of an army or the power of a company, it's about the unity of people, understanding of the environment, leadership, and disciplined execution. These constants form the backbone of strategic thinking, not just in warfare, but in life and business. They serve as a timeless guide, steering us through the complex landscape of conflict and competition and towards victory. Sun Tzu emphasizes the importance of offense in strategy. In the realm of warfare, Sun Tzu didn't just see offense as an act of aggression. Rather, he viewed it as a strategic move, a game of chess where the objective is not just to capture the king, but to outmaneuver the opponent in such a way that they are left without any viable moves. One of the key pillars of Sun Tzu's offensive strategy is the power of deception. He proclaimed, all warfare is based on deception. In effect, he was advocating for the use of misdirection and subterfuge to confuse the enemy, to make them believe one thing while you do another. This could mean feigning weakness when you are strong or feigning strength when you are weak with the ultimate aim of keeping the enemy off balance. Next, Sun Tzu stressed the importance of speed and preparation. He understood that time is a crucial element in warfare. Being able to strike swiftly and unexpectedly can give you a significant advantage over the enemy, but speed alone is not enough. It must be complemented by thorough preparation. Knowing the terrain, understanding the enemy's strengths and weaknesses, and having a well-trained and well-equipped force, these are all vital components of a successful offensive strategy. Lastly, Sun Tzu valued adaptability. He wrote, The general who wins a battle makes many calculations in his temple before the battle is fought. The general who loses a battle makes but few calculations beforehand. In other words, while it is important to have a plan, it is equally important to be flexible and able to adjust that plan based on the changing circumstances on the battlefield. In Sun Tzu's view, the best offense is not just about brute force but about outsmarting the enemy. It's about using deception to keep them guessing, speed and preparation to seize the initiative, and adaptability to respond to whatever the enemy throws at you. As such, 
Sun Tzu's teachings on offensive strategy remain as relevant today as they were over 2,000 years ago. But offense is not everything. Sun Tzu also speaks to the power of a solid defense. Often, in the rush to conquer and to win, we forget that defense is just as vital as offense. The great strategist Sun Tzu knew this well. His teachings on defensive strategy are a testament to the importance of being prepared and understanding the dynamics of battle. Sun Tzu believed that knowing one's enemy is fundamental to a robust defensive strategy. He argued that to defend effectively one must understand the enemy's intentions, tactics, strengths and weaknesses. By knowing your enemy, you can anticipate their moves, disrupt their plans and create opportunities to strike back. It's not just about knowing their battle formations but understanding their motivations, their fears, their hopes. It's about seeing the world from their perspective. But knowledge of the enemy is just half the equation. Equally important, according to Sun Tzu, is the strategic positioning. He emphasized the significance of terrain and environment in defensive strategy. The choice of where to make a stand, where to retreat, and where to counterattack can make or break a defense. It's about using the landscape to your advantage, to create barriers for the enemy and opportunities for yourself. Patience, too, is a crucial aspect of Sun Tzu's defensive strategy. In the heat of a battle, when emotions run high and the pressure is immense, it's easy to act impulsively. But Sun Tzu advised against this. He believed in waiting for the right moment, in observing the enemy, and understanding the rhythm of the battle before making a move. Patience, according to him, can be a weapon more powerful than any sword or spear. For Sun Tzu, a good defense is not just about resisting the enemy, but about turning their strengths into weaknesses. It's about using knowledge, strategic positioning, and patience to not just withstand the enemy's onslaught, but to turn their own force against them. It's about turning the tables, about making the enemy defeat themselves. And that, in essence, is the power of a solid defense. So, how does Sun Tzu's art of war apply to the modern world? Well, let's start with the fact that Sun Tzu's principles are timeless. They transcend the ages, proving to be as relevant today as they were over 2,000 years ago. Take, for instance, the idea of knowing your enemy. This principle is not only applicable to military strategy but also to business, where understanding your competitors can give you an edge in the market. Let's not forget Sun Tzu's advocacy for the strategic use of deception. In the 21st century, this could translate to the use of marketing tactics that create a perception of your brand that is favorable, or perhaps even superior, to your competitors. And what about his emphasis on the importance of speed and adaptability? In a world where technology and trends are constantly evolving, businesses and individuals alike need to be able to pivot quickly and adapt to new circumstances. Those who fail to do so risk falling behind and losing their competitive edge. In politics, Sun Tzu's principles have found a new home. The art of negotiation, the use of alliances, understanding the terrain. These are all strategies that politicians use to gain advantage and achieve their goals. Even in our everyday lives we can apply Sun Tzu's wisdom. The concept of choosing your battles wisely, for example, can help us navigate interpersonal relationships and avoid unnecessary conflicts. We can also use his principle of using our strengths to exploit the weaknesses of others to our advantage, whether it's in a job interview, a sports game, or a debate. Sun Tzu's Art of War, then, is not just a book about warfare but a guide to navigating the challenges of life. It's about understanding the dynamics of conflict and competition and using that understanding to strategize and achieve our goals. It's about being prepared, being adaptable, and being aware, not just of our enemies, but of ourselves. Sun Tzu's Art of War, then, is not just a book about warfare, but a guide to navigating the challenges of life. We have explored the main principles of Sun Tzu's Art of War. We've examined the significance of strategy, delving into the essence of the five constants, and understanding their foundational role in decision-making. We've stepped onto the battlefield dissecting offensive and defensive strategies and how they intertwine, each a cog in the grand machine of war. We've also contemplated the enduring relevance of Sun Tzu's wisdom. His strategic principles, though centuries old, still echo in the corridors of power today, shaping political, corporate, and military maneuvers alike. His ideas, from the importance of understanding one's enemy to the value of adaptability, continue to guide leaders in making calculated decisions. Sun Tzu's Art of War is more than a military treatise. It's a timeless guide to navigating conflict and uncertainty, a testament to the power of strategy and insight. 
Remember, in the words of Sun Tzu, the supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. Thank you.